Hey everybody, Frank Finance here. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we're gonna to be talking about some frequently asked questions I get down in the comments from you guys during some of the DD videos I've been putting out. So we're gonna talk about delisting, we're gonna talk about the potential fine, we're gonna talk about buy and sell. Um, different people are saying, should I sell, should I buy, when's a good entry point, those types of questions. And then answer some random questions that I get down in the comments as they relate to DD. All right, so one of the biggest questions I get asked here recently is DD going to be delisted? What do I think that possibility is going to be? Well, in short, I think that possibility is probably around 50% or greater. Um, you know, just in some of the rumors, some of the latest news and headlines that we've read with the possibility of being delisted, um, Looking back at what we saw with Alibaba and the leak of that fine, I was very skeptical of um, you know un um, you know sources that haven't been named, and and I was a little skeptical and I was wrong on that. So with this delisting threat from um, the Chinese regulators, um, it may have some bite to it. And what this what this really means is. Um, I think you have the possibility to convert over to Hong Kong shares. I think um, if they are delisted, you're still holding. I think they may convert to over the counter. Um, what this ha what happens there is you have less liquidity. It may be harder to sell the shares. There's typically a premium you pay to have um, a stock on a you know New York Stock Exchange or in the Nasdaq, these American exchanges. So those are two things to you know definitely two things to be concerned about. So yeah, I do think it's a possibility, and I think there is could be a possible bite to this threat. Does it mean that you can't own DD as an investment? Absolutely not. I, I still am holding my shares, and I've been um, dollar cost averaging down into the dips here. Um, and and going kind of on the opposite side of this, there was one one person who kind of had their their opinion on this, so I'll just go ahead and share it. Um, they said, um, Hamza Zafar, he said, my guess is the fine will probably be in the 2.5 to 4 billion range. Um, and, and the thing here is he put China won't kill its golden goose. Delisting the stock is extremely unlikely as it could affect us China relations. Now, I don't think, um, the U S is going to get involved. Um, at least the U S government in this one, they already, there's kind of this adversarial relationship between U.S. and China as it relates in different stocks. Um, with the Biden administration, I'm not really too concerned about delisting from the U.S. side. Um, so I, I'm not too concerned about that. I, I don't think that really has much of a, of, of a play in this. I do think, however, China has an incentive to make sure that the companies inside, you know, China companies are definitely um, abiding by the rules and um, they have an incentive to keep, you know, keep them in check to make sure that the CCP has power at the end of the day. And some of these companies who kind of go around their rules and what they what they require, um, they like to make examples out of them. And they're showing and they have shown, especially with Alibaba here recently, that they're not going to tolerate it. Um, so that's definitely a concern. I, I mean, I think there is some bite to, to the bark here. We will see here pretty shortly, I believe, once this fine comes out. Hopefully the stock doesn't get delisted, but we'll have to we'll have to pay attention to it and see. So the next question I like to address is should I buy or sell DD Global? One of the things I always think about when I make an investment is why am I investing in said company? What are the risks associated with it? What is, how long am I planning on holding this investment? Some of those questions you have to ask yourself when you per first purchase or even through an investment um, as you hold it, you have to reevaluate, have any of the fundamentals from when I you know, invested changed? There definitely have been some things that have changed since me making the original purchase. I knew this was in, you know, at IPO, I posted a video that I thought at IPO they were overvalued and they needed to drop into that $12 range. Once they got under 12, that's when I started making my purchases. However, things have continued to go down and down and down, and now we're sitting at the $8 range. But I still have to sit back and ask myself, has anything fundamentally changed from when you purchased from the app being gone? The answer, I have to, the answer is no. I knew the app was already gone, or it was gonna be taken off the app store. And the answer for me is, is there's nothing's actually changed. 
Right now, what we're doing is we're in a waiting game until we know out what the actual repercussions for the, the cybersecurity issues are and seeing what that's going to look like moving forward. Um, my whole investing logic behind this is they're a $20 billion company in revenue. They're on their way to getting a net profit um, or net income, uh, net income positive. And, and, and once that happens, I believe that their definitely valuation is definitely justified. They have a solid market market share right now around 90%. But if this if this app removal um, exceeds anywhere from, uh, I said, one month to three months, there's going to be significant market share erosion. And that's going to definitely have some consideration. That's going to affect their total revenue. Um, even in an expanding market, this rapid decrease in market share will definitely have um you know, three to five year implications, will, which will affect the valuation today. So these are things that you have to consider when making a purchase in DD. You also have to, you know, sometimes you have to think about opportunity costs as well. Is there something out there that could, you know, you feel you sleep better at night with? You're able to, um, you know, maybe make a higher return on. Some of these, there's there's so many questions you can ask yourself in investing. And you also have to, you know, that, and the last thing is that that risk. Um, risk management, making sure that, you know, there is, you know, a, as I went over before, significant risk of delisting at this point. That is a new thing. And I said it was above 50%. That's a very significant risk in terms of ha losing that in, you know, New York Stock Exchange premium will definitely lower the value of the stock. Will that, ma will that change anything, in my opinion, from uh, what I thought about how they're going to get you know, basically their path to positive net income. No, it doesn't change that. Um, the company in and of itself just needs their app back on the app store and being able to resume operations and all that can become true. Them being posted on the New York Stock Exchange does not affect their path to that, okay? So delisting, in my opinion, is, is, is less of a concern, definitely has a price impact on the stock due to liquidity and other things. But those are some things you need to think about when you're considering buying or selling Didi. It definitely is a stock that has a lot of volatility at the moment. There's definitely risk associated with it. Sit back, ask yourself, why am I investing in Didi? Um, there's opportunities on the trading here to do short-term trading, you know, get in for a couple hours, get out. There's opportunity here, I believe, and this is what my position is for long-term, um, three to five years at, you know, at a minimum. And so there's a couple different strategies here. And so, again, when you're considering buying with Didi, consider the volatility and all the things I just talked about. When you're considering selling, ask yourself retrospectively, has anything changed and do I feel the same conviction about the stock or are there other opportunities I'd like to use with either this investment or future future income that I want to put into investments? So those are definitely things you want to you know think about. When you're when you're gonna buy when you're considering the buy or sell question. All right, so the next question I've been getting is how big is the fine going to be imposed by the CCP? Clearly, I don't know the answer to that. We know it's bigger than Alibaba's. I believe that was at like 2.3 billion. Um, so we know it's going to be higher than that. So you know anything higher than that is probably um, makes sense. If they really wanted to make an example, I think worst case scenario, if they really wanted to make an example out of Didi, they'd find them the $4.4 billion they raised through the IPO, essentially diluting the company um, you know, by the shares they issued by $4 billion to the existing shareholders, as well as the ones that went in at the IPO. They basically take that cash out of the business you know, and, and stick it to the existing shareholders um, as well as new shareholders. And there's nothing anyone can do about that. Definitely adds dilution to the company. I'm always talking about shares outstanding. And I'd be a you know, bigot if I didn't say this is something concerning. Um, so yes, if they, if, they went, if they went the, I'd say at the extreme level and find it the 4.4 billion rate in for around 4.4 billion, it'd basically be like DD you know, issued new shares and got nothing out of it, right? It's essentially what it would would work out to, and even at you know the two point three two point, um, even if they just barely find above Alibaba two point three, you know, 
it's still pretty large dilution in retrospect of what what the company is getting out of it. You you lose a large per- percentage of your IPO. You know the whole reason is to raise capital for expansion, investments, whatever um, general expenses, whatever it may be. Um, and you're not getting it. You're not getting that dollar value out of it. So it's essentially a large portion of their um, you know IPO still getting sucked out, still dilution to a large extent because that capital is actually just going right out of the business and not being invested and you're not seeing an ROI on that money that they raise in the IPO. So it's it's definitely concerning. Um, I, yeah, I definitely think it's probably gonna be, it's probably gonna be 3 billion. Um, I would just say just 3 billion US dollars. And and that's just a guess, you know. Yeah, I, it really doesn't matter how big the fine is, it's still a pretty big impact on the, the stock um, just because it kind of, kind of, you know, takes away the it takes the wind out of the sails from the IPO. Kind of begs the question: Why do they even IPO if the, if you know if the money's just all gone anyways? All right, so I got a few random questions I wanted to go through. So I James seventeen eleven said, if China regulators decide to punish Didi by making it partially state owned, could that potentially be good for the company in the long run? I think China would want them to do well in that scenario. Would like to hear your thoughts, whatever the penalty may be. I think this rebounds when there is less uncertainty. I definitely agree with the last piece on that, that it definitely will uh, you know, rebound once the uncertainty um, kind of goes away. Definitely agree with that. Address the question on it being partially state-owned. Um, it definitely puts incentive on China for, for Didi to actually – um, for them to kind of back off. But here's my here's my opinion, and it might not be well taken, is th- these private companies, even though they're in China, still do better by just being private and asking for forgiveness later, or at least historically, companies asking for, per- you know, moving quickly, getting the market share, um, being the first to market, you know, looking at the statistics on being the first to any market, um, and establishing yourself before competitors, even if there's some you know issues with it along the way, those those people mostly those companies corporations, they likely are the ones to bear the most fruit. They'll pay the fine, do whatever it is. It's basically a cost of doing business to them. And if you can acquire customers for, let's say in this case, it's that you know worst case scenario is four billion four point four billion dollars. Well, you acquired that much micro marketplace for four point four billion dollars, but in this case, um, if they pay this penalty at you know four point four or over two point three, whatever it may be, and the IPO goes by, um, they you know they didn't gain anything out of it. They actually they're actually going to lose market share um, with the app being taken out of the marketplace. So, I think. If they if they went ahead and had an agreement to go pay it partially state owned, that could get their app in the app store a little quicker and could help them secure that market share that they're losing currently while their app is off the store. Um, yeah, so it, I like to see private companies stay private. Not a huge huge fan for for any company um, getting ownership by the uh, the state. So that's just my um, my answer on that one. Um, Joseph Estrada asked, what's your skincare regimen, your skin glows? This is a compliment. Also, I'm a DD bag holder, by the way. Laugh out loud. Um, I don't do anything on my skin. Don't put anything on there. Wash my face. That's about it. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> appreciate the question. Thanks for the compliment. Uh, next question. If they withdraw the IPO, do they pay U.S. investors? They sold at $14. The answer is no. Um, the IPO, you know, those are either sold to banks and then they're resold to U.S. You know, whoever's buying and selling at the market orders. Um, the the best that happens in this case, like let's say they sold at fourteen, um, and there was information that was known to them, and there was a real case out there, and you know, you were you were initial IPO hold uh, buyer, and um, there's initial information known to them that wasn't known to the investors. There's a potential that they could get fined um, or some other litigation where they would have to pay um, damages to the shareholders. But however, 
this is not likely and it would take years to play out. And um, you probably will not get 100% on any losses that you did incur it, you know, with that information. So it's a long shot. Is it right? No. Is that what happens? Yeah. Um, on uh, next one was just, this was a statement, but it addresses a bigger problem or bigger, bigger question overall is never touch a Chinese company due to huge risk from the CCP. Now this is just, this is more of a statement than a question, but I thought it was definitely a question people ask is why would you invest in a Chinese company when there's plenty of U S companies? Um, just looking at ride hailing inside of uh, the U.S., you have Uber and Lyft as the two major competitors here. And DD itself is larger than both those. They have better financials, larger revenues, closer to positive net income than both of them combined. Um, and DD's infrastructure in China supports the business model a lot better than Uber and Lyft here in the States, in my opinion. So I think, at least in this particular investment, there are some good reasons as to why you would invest in Didi over Uber and Lyft. Um, and I think you could make some arguments for other Chinese companies as well. But, you know, to each their own, if you only want to invest in uh, U.S. companies, go for it. I definitely have a lot of investment in U.S. companies as well. But um, I definitely have, you know, some ETFs in China as well that are just there for diversification. Not a huge position in my portfolio, but, um, you know, it, it, it's good to have some diversity there and not just have everything sitting on, um, you know, weight on the U S government. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go back to that Warren Buffett quote. He said, and I'm not going to go for the whole full quote, but you know, don't bet against America. Right. Um, and he's been right, you know, so, you know, huge, huge, uh, Huge supporter of Warren Buffett, really like his investment methodologies. Um, and, you know, you know, if you don't feel comfortable with it, definitely don't do it. You know, it's there's definitely a lot of volatility in this name. And right now with Chinese stocks, they're all on sale. You know, um, Alibaba, I think, is one of the biggest names out there. Huge. I mean, price to earnings on Alibaba is 25 right now for a company that has, I think, over like 25, 30 percent growth year over year and um, amazing company has you know, huge margins, huge net income, huge uh, free cash flow on sale. If you compare it to Amazon or eBay, um, it's it's an I think an amazing deal right now. Um, the next question was any Chinese company linked to Jiang's camp pose a pose a threat to dictator Z. Z. So that's the president. Um, you know, I, I think this is a really good point, and it's more of a political um, political point. And it poses the question: Is you know we've seen this type of action with um, Alibaba and Jack Ma and Jack Ma speaking out against China or saying something negative about China um, in the political sense, and it came back, and you had you know, an IPO being delayed, lots of, you know, new investigations in Alibaba that weren't there before. And so I think these, um, you know, companies, the leaders of these companies have to be very mindful about what the adverse impact is that on through their investors. Um, does it afford a buying opportunity? Absolutely. But this has kind of affected Chinese stocks across the board at this point. Didi has not just affected, you know, Didi's IPO and all the things that have happened. It seems like there's been this, you know, uh, domino effect where it's just causing the whole boat to kind of sink here, um, at least the China boat here. And it's, um, you know, I'm not saying all Chinese companies are by. I'm not saying that Didi itself is, you know, the best Chinese company to invest in. But there are, I think, some good names that you can invest in in China that will rise out of this even stronger and you have some good sales here. And this kind of goes back to the, you know, another Warren Buffett quote is um, be uh, be greedy when others are fearful, fearful when others are greedy. And I think this is a, a really prime example of that. It doesn't mean everything is a good investment in China. It just means that there are some good deals out there. You just have to find them and ones that you feel comfortable, meet your risk profile, um, and, and you can sleep at night. 
And if it if he does those things, then I think it you know could be a very good investment for you. Please consider subscribing, like the video if you enjoyed it. Also leave a comment down below, ask any questions about Didi or anything else you have questions about. I'll definitely respond in the comments and let you know my thoughts. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Frank Finance.